Today we are coming back to Microatomic Theory 2. Good morning everybody, we meet in the class today of Microatomic Theory 2. Today I will show you how to solve the sequential game. It is the extension of the game theory. We have learned about the simultaneous game and you can see that we have many types of simultaneous game and we solve them by many different methods. For example, the Vinam strategy and Nash equilibrium and if you have more than one Nash equilibrium or no Nash equilibrium at all, then you have to use the mixed strategy and the probability uh, to find the tendency that both players yeah. you do. And then you will find the last solution that is the focal point equilibrium as suggested by Thomas Schoening. Today, it is another game that may change about your thought because it is not the players that move simultaneously but one player move first and the second player move later. We call it the sequential game. So you see that one player may have an advantage over another player because they know what another player will react. I will draw the tree of the game and then let's see what would happen. So follow me. In this sequential game, suppose A is the player who moves first. A can choose to go left and to go right. After that, we have player B to move later. Player B can decide to go left or to go right. This is like a tree. You see that A decides to go left and B can decide to go left or right. And A decides to go right and B can decide to go left or right. Here, and we have the payoffs here. at the end of the tree. So you see that if A go left and B go left, what would happen? You can also in here, if A go left and B, another player, go left, so they don't crash. They don't crash. And here, both of them happy. So here, 100 and 100. Happy and happy. Because they don't crash to each other. But if A goes left and B goes right, then they crash and they hurt. Both of them hurt. Then O oh, minus 200 and minus 200 over here. After that, if A goes right and B goes left, here, one, uh, no, they crash and minus 200 and minus 200. And if they choose the same thing, they don't touch, and it is 100 and 100. Let's see what would happen. We have to think about A first. A have to, A have to think about the reaction function of B. Taking, the, taking into account the reaction function of B. For example, if A goes left, if A, score, if A goes left, then B can choose between 100 and minus 200. What would B choose? What do you think? What would B choose? We have to choose 100 over minus 
200 because water is more than minus 200. Therefore, B will go F2. So, this is A knows that B will go to the left. If A goes left and B goes left, this is the reaction function of B. And here, if A goes right, and then B goes, B has to think about 100 and minus 200 again. Therefore, B will go right because 100 is more than minus 200. And here is another relation function of B. You see that if A goes left, then A knows that B will go to the left too. And if A goes to the right, then A also know that B will go to the right too. And now we compare the payoffs. Here, if A goes to the left, B goes to the left. And most of them get 100 and 100. And here, if A goes to the right and B goes to the right, then most of them get 100. Here's a very simple example. And you can ensure that no matter A goes to the left or to the right, they don't crash because B you choose a better way to avoid the crash. Simple, easy. And most of them you end up with happiness. 100 and 100 for every situation. But if we change the payoff, Think of here, 200 and 200. What would happen? If A goes to the left, B goes to the left, and both of them get 200. And here, if A goes to the right, and B goes to the right, and both of them get 100. Which one is better for A? A will be the one who choose the move because A moves first, then A choose the move. What do you think? A will choose left or A will choose right? If A choose left, then A will get 200. And now if A choose right, A will get just only 100. Which one is better? 200 for sure. Then the game will end up at A, you go to the left because 200 is more than 100. And B, you react to go to the left too. This is the solution of the game, equilibrium. And the payoffs A, you get. 200 and B, you get 200. Easy. This is very easy. This is how you solve the sequential game. So, let's go to next example. In the previous example, A and B are good friends. They reach the happiness for each other. Therefore, okay, I would like to crash you and I would like you to be happy too. The social benefit. Yes, the social benefit is 200 plus 200 equals to 400. If 400 is the largest one, in all the payoffs, or the largest one among the payoffs, then it is the Pareto optimality.
if it's the Pareto optimality. Very good. You can think of another kind of game that people may not may not want another player to be good or to have a good result. For example, zero sum two. You can think of another kind of game that a player has to compete with another player and the results end up with zero sum of the payoffs. Therefore, it is the zero sum game here. For example, A, we do something. So, choice one, and we have choice number two over here. And B, and think of choice one and choice two over here. And the payoffs. If it is the zero sum game, then probably 100 and minus 100, 200 and minus 200, 300 and minus 300, 400 and minus 400. You may ask why B has the minus ever always have the negative payoff. Because this is the advantage of A, who moves first. A has to choose something that can yield the positive payoff for him or for her. And let another one get the worst payoff. And all of the results are zero sum. 100 minus 100, zero. 200 minus 200, zero. 300 and minus 300, zero, and this is also zero. Now, what would happen if A chooses choice number one, then B will choose choice number minus 100 and minus 200. A choose one, and B will choose one because minus 100 is more than minus 200. And another relation function, if A chooses 2, then B chooses minus 300 and minus 400. Which one is better? Of course, minus 300 is better. Therefore, B will choose 1. Now, Think of the payoffs here, if A choose 1 and B choose 1, A will get 100, B will lose 100, and here, if A choose 2 and B will choose 1, A will get 300, and B will get minus 300, or lose 300. So, which one is better for A? Sure, 300 and 100. Fairman is better, therefore A will choose number 2 and B will choose number 1 and here is the solution of the game. So the game will end up at the equilibrium of 2 and 1 and the payoffs of 300 and minus 300. Here is the solution of the zero sum game. So, let's see the next example. Now, we consider a game, but not zero sum, but one view gain and one view lose. Here, A, a game, choose choice number one and choose choice number two and then B can choose choice number one and choice number two as well 
here B1 and B2. The pair of this very interesting over here. You can see that B will regret forever and here B will be heard of minus 100, here B will be heard by minus 300, here B will be heard by minus 100 and here B will be heard minus 300. You see, in this kind of game, it is of course that B will choose 1 over choice number 2 because minus 100 is better than minus 300. A knows about that. But look at the odds of A. For example, A think of here 400. A think of here uh -huh, 200. Uh, for example, no, no. Uh, I switch a little bit. Here is 400 and this is 200. And here, this is uh, 500 and this is just, uh, uh, no, no, this is not. Okay, 200 is okay and here just only 100. Let's look at the relation function. Here, if A chooses 1, then B will choose 1, of course, because minus 100 is better than minus 300. Here, B, 1, 2. And if A chooses choice number 2, B will choose choice number 1, of course. And look at the payoffs here, 400 and minus 100. And here, 500 and minus 100. Not surprise, not surprise. 500 is better, 400 is better. Then, A you choose 2 and B you choose 1. The game ends up the same. Here, 2 and 1. Now, the payoff is 500 and minus 100. I change a little bit in this game, and you will see the surprise. From minus 100 here, then minus 300, uh, 250, for example, 250. The relation function is the same because B considers that minus 250 is better than minus 300, then B will choose 1, no matter. But here you see that this is. 250, this is 100 meters. What will be the equilibrium? If A is rational enough, then A will choose 500 over 400 and A will choose strategy number 2, not 1. But look, if A hates B a lot and wants B to be hurt more, what would happen? I think that B will be hurt. You lose 250 over here, but you lose just only 100 over here. And everything that I want B to lose more. I get just only 400 is okay, but I want B to lose more. A hates B. In this case, a don't want just only his or her happiness, but want another side to be hurt. Then the equilibrium in this case will change to be A will choose number one and B will choose number one. And the payoffs will be 400 and minus 250. Therefore, you see something very surprised. It depends on the objective of the player, especially the player who moves first. If the objective is just focused on himself or herself, then 
the equilibrium will be 500 and minus 100 here because he or she maximizes his or her utilities. But if the objective is to hurt another one hard, the hardest choice is 400 here and minus 250. Then the equilibrium will be 1 and 1 with the payoff of 400 and minus 250. So it depends on objective. The equilibrium depends on the objective. Of player who moves first. This is the first mover advantage because the first mover can choose the objective of the game. Point. First mover's advantage. The first mover can choose the objective of the game to make both happy or to hurt someone hard, to punish someone. They can choose a rate of optimality. is the best choice, the highest social benefit, or they can choose to punish another player hard. So this is the first move as advantage. Not only the objective, the first mover can choose the strategy. The strategy that leads to the objective. So you see in the sequential game, we have one side that takes advantage and another side that is disadvantage. And it is the first mover's advantage. In businesses, they're trying to be the first mover. But not all of them are successful because some other businesses or some other firms can imitate the product and it is the second mover's advantage. Here is another story. Then first mover Innovate. Of course, if there is no imitator, copier, then the firm will occupy the whole market monopoly power in the market. But the second mover then the firm who moves second imitate copy then the firm can make money without spending off R and D investment and save the cost and gains a lot and push the first mover to have less 
profit. So this is the second move for advantage. I would like you to draw a tree with first mover, for example, firm A, and second mover, for example, firm B. Draw a tree with firm A and firm B, and try to create the tree and ends up with the pair that B is advantage forever because B is the imitator and imitate everything that A create or innovate. Then you do this for homework, the challenge of this class. I will ask if someone can do it. And of course, it is very good to be included in the examination. Let's try to create a tree for the second homework's advantage. I hope that you enjoy the class and see you in next class. Today, goodbye. Thank you. Sorry,